everybody, it's Hayden here, your favourite SATS preparation teacher. Sorry, Dylan. And today, we're going to perform an operation. What? Oh, no. Today, we are going to look at the order of operations in maths. That makes more sense. I was a bit scared there. Let's dive in and see what I'm rambling on about. So, look at this equation up here. Looks very com complicated, right? And the reason it's complicated is because there's lots of operations in here. There's lots of things going on. If you're wondering what an operation is in maths, generally when we're talking about operations, we're talking about division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. But we've also got the addition here of indices. This is an indice, sometimes called order. When I was at school, it was called bod mass. We called it bod mass because O standard for order. In this case, we now call it indices. And indices is simply when we have a number to the power of number, another number. All you need to worry about is squares and cubes in primary school. So four squared meaning four times four, four cubed meaning four times four times four, which would look like this. This would be the indice. Okay. And finally, brackets. Okay. So when you've got some parentheses and brackets in your equation, um, that's another operation for us to think about. So what does bid mass mean? Well, let's have a look. It has, it, each letter stands for something, it's an acronym, and it stands for exactly what I just said. Brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. It's worth learning that. Bid mass, bid mass, bid mass. Write it down 10 times, it will be there. And we can use it from top to bottom to order the operations and get the answer right. Now, if we didn't have an order, a different mathematician could come along and answer this question. Maybe they start with a different operation first. They start with some addition, or they start with the division first, and get a completely different answer. So mathematicians need an order so that we always get the same answer to the questions. So let's whiz through it then. First thing that on our list, the highest priority is brackets. All that means is you have to do what's inside the brackets. What's inside the brackets here is 15 take away 7. So my good practice is replacing this with the answer to the brackets. 15 take away 7 is 8. And now I'm left with a new equation. 4 squared divided by 2 plus 8. Brackets can be ticked off. Next up is indices. This is here, 4 squared, which we know means 4 times 4. I'm going to replace that with 16. Now I'm left with 16 divided by 2 plus 8. I've got two things left. I've got division and addition. So division comes up next. Let's do that. 16 divided by 2. So I'm going to replace this part here, 16 divided by 2, with its answer, which is 8. Now it's getting a bit confusing, so I'm just going to rewrite down below the information I've got left. I've got 8 plus... 8. That's all I've got left. There's no multiplication to worry about, but I must now do this addition. 8 plus 8, of course, gives me my final answer now because there's no operations left of 16 and there was no subtraction to worry about. So look at that. We had four operations. We did them in the right order and therefore we got the correct answer. It is as simple as that. So what we're going to do first is dive into some old SATs questions. Let's see what um, arithmetic questions we actually get in the SATs that involve bid mass. So here's the first one. Each one that comes up, we'll go back in time. This is the 2023 paper. We'll look at the question. You have a go at solving it and then, then come back to see the answer. So have a go at this one. Right, you're back. We've got two operations going on, addition and division. Let's use bid mass to find out which one's more important. Brackets, no. Indices, no. Aha, division, yes. Let's do the division sentence first. 48 divided by 6. I can replace that with its answer, which is 8. Now I'm left with multiplication. Nope. Addition, yes. 70 plus 8 gives me my final answer of 78. And that's it. It's as simple as that, guys. Try the next question. This is from the 2022 SATS paper. So we're going back a year now. Okay, so you're back. We've got 6 plus 4 divided by 2. Again, let's use bid mass. What comes first? Ah, division again. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we're left with 6 plus 2, which gives us the answer of 8. Now, what mistake do you think people could make on this one? Because I see a lot of children doing this. They forget about bid mass and they just do it left to right, like they're reading a sentence, which unfortunately doesn't always work. 6 plus 4 would give us 10. And then if we divided by 2, we'd get actually get an answer of 5. So you, hopefully you can see the importance of bid mass here. And, uh, and you can see why a lot of children and adults maybe do actually put an answer of five there, which is wrong. It's incorrect. Have a go at the 2019 arithmetic paper question. So this one's the first time we've seen some brackets in these questions. And we know that brackets come first before everything. So let's do the brackets first. So we're just working out what's inside, which is 30 subtract 24. Counting up from 24 to 30, I know that this makes six. And then I'm left with, I'm going to rewrite it below, 60 divided by 6. I've got no other operations to do, so I can simply solve it now and get an answer 
of 10. These aren't so bad, guys, are they? Let's have a look at a couple more. See if we can uh, master all these SATs arithmetic questions. Look at this one. Have a go. So this is pretty simple. I think it, it's quite hard to make a mistake here in terms of order of operations. The only mistake I see children doing all the time, let's find out if you're one of them, is forgetting what 6 squared means. It means 6 times 6, not 6 times 2. That is not correct. So if you wrote 12, that's not the right answer. 12 plus 10, 22. Nope. 6 times 6 is 36. Then we add the 10 and we get an answer of 46. So just be careful. It's a very common trap for children to think that that means times in by 2 rather than times in by itself. And uh, last one then, let's have a look. The 2017 paper, have a go. Again, very similar to the one a few years before or after it, I suppose. We've got brackets first. We know that's the highest priority, so let's do that first. 36 divided by 6. I know my times tables. I know that makes 6. And I'm simply left with some addition. 50 plus 6 gives me an answer of... 56 and that's it that's like the last six or seven years worth of of bib mass questions in the arithmetic paper you're probably thinking that's kind of easy it is kind of easy okay but what happens is you're trying to remember 72 other things in the arithmetic paper what often happens is children forget to use bib mass they just go from left to right just going back a couple of slides they got they revert back to doing this you know six plus four is ten divided by two is five it's the wrong answer. So you've just got to remember when you see more than one operation or you see some brackets to um, to use bid mass. Now, I'm going to go back on myself a little bit here and tell you that even though bid mass is great, um, if you want some advanced knowledge, and I'm going beyond SATs here, guys. So if you're happy with the SATs knowledge, this might be the place to stop. But if you want to learn some more advanced mathematics, then stick around for a bit more of this video, okay? So uh, I've got lots of things on the screen here. And what I want to show you through these 10 questions is that actually you can kind of break bid mass down into just three layers rather than six. And actually, what we need to think about is that brackets and indices are the most important thing. They always have to happen first. Does it matter what order they go in? Well, not really. Let me prove it to you. In this equation here, five squared plus two times nine in brackets, it doesn't really matter if I turn five squared into 25 straight away or if I did that after turning the brackets into 18. Does it doesn't really matter, does it? Either way, I'm going to end up with 25 plus 18. Whether, whether I wrote the 18 first or the 25 first, it's not going to make a difference. Same again in here. You know, it's, I mean, there's only one way to do this because you have to do what's inside the brackets and the indices are inside the brackets. So there's no way of me not doing these indices first, to be honest with you. 50 take away 7 squared, which is 49. I'm going to have to do those first. So there was no real order between indices and brackets there. And again, just to make it really clear, I've put them all in the, in the last one. I've got 2 cubed take away 1 in brackets, so some indices here, and I've got plus 6 squared, some indices there. Does it really matter if I turn that into 36 now or, at the, or after I've done the brackets? Not really. So the point I'm trying to make here is that brackets and indices, they're the most important, highest priority thing to do. You must focus on them first if they're in the equation. Okay, now let's get on to some trickier stuff. Did you know that division and multiplication, one's not more important than the other? Bid mass tells you that division comes first, but you know what's really funny? If you go to America, they have a different acronym, which is this. Oop, not a B. They have an acronym that is this. PEMDAS. And as you can, imi as you can imagine, these last ones mean multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. But we have bid mass. So our division and multiplication are the other way around. Does that mean American mathematicians get different answers to us to maths? Surely not. Maths is universal, right? What that really shows us is that multiplication and division, they, are, have, they have the same value. It doesn't actually matter which order you do it in. You just need to understand the priority of them. And then the same happens with addition and subtraction. They are also of the same importance. One is not more important than the other. And I'm going to prove it to you with these questions above, okay? So first of all, look at this one. 6 times 4 divided by 2. I'm going to do um, bid mass. So I'm going to do the division first. I'm going to do 4 divided by 2, which gives me 2. Then I'm going to times it by 6. I'm going to get an answer of 12. Okay, interesting. What if I did PEMDAS, where I did the multiplication first? All right, then. 6 times 4 is 24. Divided by 2 is... Oh, it's still 12. It's the same answer. Okay, again, proving that they have the same level of importance. But there are some ways you can write equations where it gets really confusing and people don't know what to do. So the general rule of thumb with number five 
is that you do it from left to right if you're not too sure because we could get two different answers here and it's not because these these rules break down it's because of some even more advanced knowledge about understanding the value of this 10 with the division symbol behind it but i'm not going to go into that today because that's really really advanced maths and it'd be very confusing about how this is the same as multiplying by a tenth not going to go there so let's just use a much more simple easy to remember way of solving this which is if you have division then multiplication and you think you could get two different answers for example 100 divided by 10 is 10 then times by 2 gets 20 but if i did the 10 times 2 first which is 20 and did 100 divided by 20 i'd get an answer of 5 if you're thinking well i don't know which order to do it in because pemdas would tell me to get um 5 and bidmas would tell me to get 20 then this is the best way to do it and this is what American teachers would actually teach as well most of the time. You just work left to right. If you've got division and multiplication, just work left to right. The first one you see is the first one you do. And that actually does work. Okay, so 100 divided by 10 would be 10. We do that first because it appears first. Then we times by 2 and get the actual correct answer of 20. You can check it by putting it in a calculator. 100 divided by 10 times 2. It'll always give you the answer of 20. Now, if you did actually want, um, you, let's say you wrote that equation and you wanted your reader to do the 10 times 2 first and get the other answer of 5, then you'd simply need to use brackets around this part to force the person to do the 10 times 2 first. Because, of course, brackets come before. They're more important than, than division or multiplication. So you're, by using them, you're forcing them to do that section first. Okay, so this answer would be 5 because of the brackets. All right, bit confusing, but hopefully you're understanding that they have they do actually have the same value here. But when in doubt, work left to right. Now let's look at addition and subtraction. Some one of my favorite ones to teach um, to year sixes that are really trying to advance their understanding of maths. And this is what I'd do. Okay, I'd give them this a question here. And I'd say, what is, let's do it on the next slide. What is seven take away two plus five? I'd, I'll leave it to you. I'll, I'll, you. Pause the video, answer that question. You know, what do you get? Seven take away two plus five. Well, people get two answers, and here are the two answers. Some children will get an answer of zero. Some children will get an answer of 10. They're quite different numbers, aren't they? One of them is right and one of them is wrong. Let me show you firstly on a number line what's actually happening here, okay? And then, and then I'll talk about the, the values of these numbers. What's really happening here, if you think about it on a number line, is we're starting at the number seven, and we are subtracting two at some point and we're adding five at some point that's the way to think about it okay now if i went back to i'd get to five and then if i went forward five because remember subtraction means going backwards addition means going forward on the number line if i subtract two and then i add five i'd actually get to 10 on my number line so that's some proof that the answer is 10. um but what the problem is the children that get zero they, they have a really fatal error in their thinking the children that get zero do this they take the 2 plus 5 and they turn it into 7. But what they're not really understanding is that this number here is not actually worth 2. I just showed you in my last example that that number has a value of minus 2. So by suddenly cutting off the minus, we're actually just breaking the number. We're changing the number sentence. It's not even the same number sentence anymore. So what you need to learn about this is that uh, the value of a number is determined by its symbol before it. And if there's no symbol before it, like this 7, we assume it's a positive number. So what's really happening here is if you think about we start on 0, we were adding 7, then we took away 2, and then we added 5, and we got to 10. That's really what this question actually means. Okay? So, pretty cool. Let's go back a slide and look at my next one. So we know the answer to this is 10, not 0, because this is minus 2, not 2. And it makes it more clear when I actually swap the numbers around in the next one. Look, because this one's way more clear. 7 plus 5 minus 2. It's the same numbers, minus 2 and plus 5, but the other way around. 7 plus 5 is 12. Take away 2 is 10. And that way, you know, no one's going to argue about that one. But for some reason, we suddenly argue when it's this one. Okay, And that's normally because people think, no, addition becomes before subtraction. And they do 2 plus 5 is 7. But what they should really be doing is minus 2 plus 5 minus 2 plus 5 is positive 3 and you still get an answer of 10. Very advanced stuff. If you understood that then then well done. You know, you don't need to know this this is this is a bit beyond year 6, but it's cool. And I like maths and hopefully you do as well. So just to make it really clear, if I put brackets in like I did with the last one, I can force my reader to do um, a certain operation before another one. In this one the answer would finally be 0 because I actually have put brackets in to make them do 2 plus 5 first and turn it into 7 
and then be left with seven take away seven. Okay, how about this one then? A new question for you. The answer is either one or 17. One of them's wrong and one of them's right. What would you get? Pause the video. 15 subtract six plus eight. So a couple of ways to think about it then. You can revert back to the old just work from left to right rule. It does work just like it works with the uh, division and multiplication and just do 15 take away six is nine plus eight is 17 being the correct answer. Or you could do this. You can still do the addition first. You just need to know that that six isn't worth six. It's worth minus six. And if you did minus six plus eight, you'd end up with positive two. Okay, think about it. If you start with minus six on a number line, move eight up, you're going to get back to positive two. And then you still get the same answer. 15 plus 2 is 17. Make sense, guys? The wrong answer would be pretending that that 6 is now a positive 6, which it's not, and then doing 6 plus 8 is 14, and then doing 15 subtract 14. That would be incorrect unless you put your brackets in. Then you could get the answer of 1. If you understood that, then yeah, well done, guys. Right, I'm going to leave you with a couple of questions for you to solve. The first two... Um, are very much uh, SATs level. So if you can answer the first two questions, you're ready for your arithmetic SATs questions. And the third one is a bit more of what we just did, just as a bit of fun. Let me know your three answers in the comments, guys. Um, and also let me know if you like this video or not. We've got plenty more videos uh, on the way and already existing for SATs preparation. Please do, in, to, do go and check them out and consider subscribing today. Um, guys, thanks so much. See you next time.